Hello and welcome to Anton's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury. He's Tay Tay. Yeah. And I'm just low key flexing over here with uh, using Nords as armrests. But the Nords I've got under my arms are the Nord Piano 5, which is brand spanking new. Did a video on that that I'm sure will be linked below. There's a lot of questions that popped up from that video saying I was an idiot for not comparing it to the Grand. And you were right, I was an idiot because I'd imagine that someone, if you don't know much about Nords or these pianos, what are the differences between the Grand and the piano? But I also am a big Nord stage user. So I've got a stage three here. We're going to talk about the different actions. Uh, I'm going to try to communicate that to you, what the differences are. And this is all going to be through the lens of the latest John Mayer song, Last Train Home. So I'm going to play a piano version of it, and we're going to move up through the ranks and kind of add some more sound design. So in this video, hopefully you should learn about why you maybe want to choose the grand over the piano five or the stage, and even learn how to play Last Train Home and how to make that noise. So let's get into the video. Cheers, Tay Tay. Yep. This is the Nord Grand. Why would you buy the Nord Grand over the Nord Piano 5? They're very similarly priced at the moment. Nord Piano 5 is brand spanking new. Grand's been out a little bit, I think two years, year and a half. Let's address the obvious. Look at the size of it, the difference. When we have the piano on here, you'll see it, but we've got a much taller product here in terms of height. Lot more weight, right, Taylor? Weight a, a lot heavier. So check the specs on the weight. All leading you towards a conclusion that this is the product from Nord for someone that maybe wants that Nord sound. They love it. Maybe they've seen it on stage, but they're like, you know, I'm not really a gigging guy, uh, or guy or girl. I'm just at home and I want the best sounding electric piano I can get. And this is Nord's product for you because I. It's not made to be moved around or to be gigged with per se. I would definitely just skip on to the next bit if you think I'm doing gigs. Pretty much. Uh, unless you are the discerning. That's why I did that version at the beginning of playing a piano only version. Say you're someone that does piano music only and you're a wicked classical player, which I am not. The big headline about this product is the action. So the action is from a different brand called Kawaii, and it's it was the first time you could get a triple sensor action. So that means it's got three sensors in there, which means you can do very light stuff. Really beautiful action to play. Even when I was playing it then. So just you can hear the sample.
that was something that came up quite a bit. I will still, we'll keep that in because I've demoed it a few times. If you're a wavy hand guy like me, maybe you're not a wavy hand guy, but I just flicked on the tremolo without even knowing it. <laughs> but you can lock the panel. But that again, gigging, guess what? Gigging, all those controls flat means that, you know, if I'm there like getting gin and tonics or, you know, just getting numbers from chicks, no, no. Um, that's why we got the flat controls. This is all up front, which is lending to that person that's at home or the considered pianist. Stick with the point, Jack. It's the best action that you can get if you want to buy a Nord and you're a serious piano person. Little bit about the other aspects of it. You could layer another sound with it with this sample synth section. So I can turn that on. It's already got some strings in there. So let's hear that. Put a bit more release on it. Bit slower attack. So you can layer up the sound. So if you're at that solo piano gig, you're at a wedding or you're at a recital, this is the keyboard for you. I won't go into too much. We've got other videos on it. And if you want a great video, saving yourself the time of watching this one, go to Sound Technologies YouTube channel. Rob Wallace has done a video very concisely about all the product differences. This is just me, my take on it. All right, so let's move on quickly. Let's get the Piano 5 on there. Is the next level up of Last Train Home. And the reason why I play that sound is that that matches with what I think the type of person maybe you should look away from the grand to the new Nor Piano 5. So what are the components, what are the things that are new about the Nor Piano 5 that maybe can, because it's the same price essentially as the Nord Grand at the moment. Things obviously change, but there's some new stuff in here. Check out the other video I did on the Nor Piano 5 where I go through it in more depth, but we're just looking at the differences, right? So this keyboard action, first off the bat, it's got the triple sensor in like the Kawhi action, but we don't have that ivory feel. And to the touch, people have asked me to kind of communicate actions. And I've been wary in other videos to talk about action because it's so personal. And you know, what's good to someone is bad to another person. And I understand that I'm not the most educated player. So sometimes people who are really into actions are a different type of player to me. In all honesty, I don't care. It's a bit like the table. Everyone comments on the table being wobbly. I don't even notice. I just don't care. Maybe because I've done so many crap gigs in my life that this is a pleasure. Anyway, this action. <laughs> Let's just go to the plain piano sound. That's the white grand. One point to make all the keyboards that I play today, you can have exactly the same sound. That's why I'm not talking about in terms of piano, you can have the same sound on all three because you can go to the website and choose which pianos you load in. Big difference between the grand and this, this has double the memory. So you can take a lot more sounds to your gig or have a lot more sounds at your disposable without having to go to the computer. The other big technical change here is this is the only keyboard out of these three that can use the new sample format from Nord. And I did this in my other video, so go check that out. Essentially, when we get into the sample synth section, where I put in some strings behind 
the piano there. Let's find a string sample that maybe shows that off. That might seem crazy to you that that's a new feature, but it's that baked in lovely vibrato in the sample and it not being uh, synthesized really feels beautiful to play. And that's alluding again, this is the type of person that if you were gonna do a gig and you needed to cover a lot more sounds, this really, the Piano 5, a lot of people have said to me, is it worth getting the Piano 5? Is it worth it? If it, in that little example of Last Train Home, in my, in my brain, that first, the grand is like the person who's playing for the drinks at a wedding. When you've come in and you're just playing piano covers. And then this is the keyboard for the guy in the band later on that night. And people are expecting it to sound a bit more like the record. So let's make that quick, the patch I made at the beginning, I'll show you what I was thinking and we'll hopefully it'll demonstrate the differences. That has only one layer, one piano layer, one sample synth layer. Here we have two layers for each section. And I used that in that little snippet. So let's make a last train homey type thing. My homey type thing. So I'm in the sun, everything's off. This is what I love about Nord as well. It's all on and off, knob per function. So, I'm going to turn this layer on and I want to find a synth sound. So I'm going to flick across here, uh, synth classics, yes. And to my ear on the record, it sounds, I mean, it sounds really totally. And so to me, often there, you're looking for an analog horn type sound. So listen to that. pretty much there, you're winning already, that's great. New feature again, we've got unison, so check this out. You hear that get thicker? Off. On. I love that because it's different to chorus. If I use chorus, It sounds more natural to me. That's again something that's unique over the grand. We've got that true vibrato, unison on here, but also we've got the multi layers. So that's pretty much enough for me synth wise. Uh, I hear, and um, when you see the video, he's got uh, Phil and Gaines is there maxing it out with the two synths. In my ears, I hear something property and analog horny, then with a digital kind of 80s piano sound. So let's go to the piano section and let's find something there. Digital, full tines. That's just, think it's going to blend really well. And then on the other layer, let's find another digital one and go for... That's what I love about, that gets me right in the mood and I can layer them here, boosh. Bring in the synth. I can even finesse. Get a bit of a release on there. Maybe put some chorus on the uh, DX7 sound. I'll play the part like in a band, I wouldn't be playing the left hand so. Maybe a touch of reverb. A little bit less release.
So that's the next level, that's the Nord Piano 5. You should buy it if you're the type of person that's a discerning pianist, but you are going to do covers gigs. And also, if you want to rip a solo with that new sample format, not only do you get the true vibrato, unison, but they've managed to make mono synth sounds very playable uh, without a fully fledged synth engine. And remember, these are samples of synth, so check this out. So if someone was like, oh, I've broken a string, you need to do a dodgy solo. I can rip that now. On the old Nord piano, I'd have to be rocking with a piano sound so I get that lovely sustain. No organ, no pitch bender mod, but this is aimed at piano players. All three of these are the piano focus ones. Let's move to the stage. I'll show you the final kind of, the final countdown, Tay Tay, let's do it. Shh. Third and final keyboard that we're going to go through, the Nord Stage 3. I'm sat at the 76 key version of it. I said I was going to talk about the actions and the differences. What's interesting about this one and why we've got this one on the table is that this is the HP action, they call it. Uh, I'm not sure what it stands for, like hammer portable. It's something to do with being portable. This is the lightest one, and one of the new things with the Piano 5 was that the 76 key version and the 88 share exactly the same action, which is awesome. But if you want to save weight, and weight is a big deal, say you get on the train every time, and I know a lot of people are interested in 76 key keyboards because I get asked a lot, Jack, is there a cheaper alternative? And sadly, it seems to be one of those things that you only get on really posh keyboards which you can get 76 key versions. Uh, again, go to the Sound Technology website where they really break down. I think there's, Rob Wallace said there's a, he took pictures of the action so you can really see the inside of what's going on. But very simply, most actions have the weight here on this part of the keyboard. And in this key, key bed, they put the weight in the piano at this end. And that has saved weight somehow so it's much lighter, but also it gives it the feel of a Rhodes piano. If you've ever played a Fender Rhodes, it's just got a different feel. So again, if you're a traditionalist, you might want to get the 88 key version of this, or if you're a really stone cold classical person and you don't want any synth stuff, the grandest view. Sonically, what was going on there? This patch I made yesterday with the thought of, what if John called me up for the gig, man? What if he was like, Larry can't do it? Larry can't do it, we need you to come in. And this is why I love the stage three. And I just wanted to show you what's so good about it and what you're getting extra. Because some people maybe thought, oh, why would I buy the stage of it? Because ostensibly we have a similar sound to the one we made on the Piano 5 there, which is I've got a layered sound on panel A here. I've got the... Let's start turning things on and off and I'll show you how I built it. On panel A, we've got this ballad EP. Now on... The second panel B, I've got this sound, which is the Digi Grand. Together. And what you're hearing there is I've detuned one of the layers. 
so it gives it that wider, almost like a chorus, but I'm not using any chorus. I love the unison feature in the synth sections. It just seems to have a bit more solidity to the sound. And I think if I was gigging or if there was a musical director or John was like, why did you go for that? That would be my answer. So that's what we got going on the piano side of things. I've also used the soft release function because I just wanted to have that powdery end to the note, not an abrupt. Let's turn it off on both and you can hear the difference. Put it back on. See, just that tiny little bit. These are the little, this is what the stage three allows you. Again, maybe you've moved on from the wedding gigs or you're a really exacting wedding keyboard player and you really want to nail the sound. The stage three allows you to do that. So we've done the piano bit. What did I do in the synth world? I turn these off so we can hear what's going on in synth town. Panel A, I've got this sound. I'm looking at the panel. That's what I love about Nord. I can't really remember what I did yesterday, but I can see everything's pretty much knob per function, so I can guide you through what I've done there. Instead of using a sample, I'm generating it using the synth engine. That's a huge difference, right? So because of that, I can change the very core nature of the sound, whereas on the other two we were looking at, obviously they're piano focused. It's in the title, nor piano, nor grand piano, nor stage. I just want to get this, these points across. Not a sample, this is using the synth engine, so I've got two saw waves there, and I've got a mix of them. Change the waveform, listen. And I've blended them together. I'm using the unison feature. Listen to how powerful the unison feature is. Really spreads it out, thickens the sound. Other thing is that I've got choice over the filter. So I used a 12 dB per octave filter. This is the 24 dB. A bit brassier. Moog type one, but I like the... 12. I've also can choose how much of uh, keyboard tracking I get on it, which means that when I play up higher, for example, hear that brighten up because keyboard tracking essentially opens up the filter the, f the higher I go up the keyboard. So I can hear those. Imagine if I just had one filter setting for the whole keyboard, as I'd go up, maybe they, these wouldn't sound properly. So the filter tracking smartly expands the filter range so we can hear those notes. I've also got a bit of drive on there, so let's turn this off and hear that. Bit of drive. If I max out the drive, you can hear how much that changes the character. Again, live, I'd probably say to John, oh, I'll put a little bit of drive on it because I want it to poke it through the mix a little bit. I adjusted the filter to taste. The other thing that I was trying to demonstrate in the intro, and maybe, uh, actually let's go on to the next panel. Let's turn that off, because this is one of those guilty pleasures that you can get going. Now, uh, check this sound out. Now, it's low in the mix. What have I done there? If I have a look over, I've put it through a Roland JC Chorus Amplifier. If I turn that off, on. Giving it a little bit of drive. The other thing, I've got a bit of chorus on it. Off. Bit of chorus on. Essentially, it's a pokey little sound to give it a bit more sizzle. And when I put them together, Just the panel A on its own. It 
it just gives it a little bit more grime, made it feel a bit more vintage to me. I put them all on together and we got this. With just a smidge and a reverb to taste on there. Now, the next bit that none of these can do, and which I showed off a little bit, is say I, I walk in and I listen to the record, and to me that kind of matched the brightness. It may seem a bit dull to you, but put it on next to the record, I thought that was pretty bang on. And when I do a gig, I always start with a record because that's what you're getting paid to do, to replicate the record at first. If I go in and a bit like people say with guitars, Maybe at home you were playing it on the net pickup, but you turned up to the gig, you realised no one could hear it, so you flicked it to the bridge. I've got these pitch bend and mob wheels here, and I have the whole world of morphing. Now morphing can is essentially using either the wheel, aftertouch, or a control pedal to control almost anything on the Nord, up and down, and all manner, all at once. Things can be go down, things can be going up. In this instance, I thought, well, if I went into that rehearsal. Yeah, no, 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 Jack, that's too dark. So what I did was I mapped the filter cutoff to this wheel. I've also put a little, I've made this control the wet dry mix of a ping ponging high passed delay. And you'll hear that come in. And that's me again thinking like, how can I make a good impression how can I give myself options in the moment? And that's what the stage gives you, so check it out. Ah, too dark. Ah, cool. And it also means that towards the end of the song, uh, I saw the Kimmel performance, and at the end they're kind of going between a... Uh, they're rocking on A or something, uh, I think. So I can kick in without that. Oh, cool. But we're at the gig, I've got freaking Steve Jordan there. Give me a bit of that shwingy shwing shwing on the cymbals. I want to match him and be like. Get me my gin and tonic. I'm going to the club. That's what this can do. A little bit. Um, also with the stage three, I've got all the organ stuff in there, so maybe even he was like, oh, you know, we got some, we got a choir in today, and uh, we want to make it sound a little bit more gospel. <laughs> even then, with the wheels, say I wanted those to go back, I'll do it. Wheel hold it down, choose where my drawbars are. Now when I'm up, I've still got that delay and the drawbars are all out. And that ping-pongy kind of end of gig thing, yeah! But if I want to pull out the drawbars all smoothly, like... See those fade out? So I can have things going up, going down. I could have two control pedals. Other things we've got four outputs, so if the sound guy goes, hey Jack, that organ, I want to treat differently, you know, we've got a really posh sound guy, that's cool man, I can send my organ out of a different output. And everything I played today, I played using the triple pedal, you get that, you get this included with the grand, and you get it included with the piano five, you don't get it with the stage three, but it can recognise it, and what it does, it allows you Again, if you're a proper piano player, you might use the other two, but it also unlocks the noise feature, or the soundboard, soundboard noise feature, which is really good when you're just playing exposed piano on its own. That's pretty much it. Also, I want to, a call to arms. I made this patch yesterday. I have an uh, Instagram that really doesn't have anything on it because I'm, pretty, I'm a bit of an old man when it comes to that. But if you go find it on there, we've got a link below. Just send me a message, you don't even have to follow me. If you want this patch, I've got it. I'm sure there'll only be about three people. So that's fine, I can cope with that. I'll email it to you. And this is the patch. 
we'll leave out the organ, but this should get you going if you've got to cover it in a function band and you've got this. And hopefully that gave you enough idea to go build the sound yourself. If you want a full tutorial on it, on how to play it and all the different parts, uh, let us know in the comments. We might do that another time. But thanks Tay Tay as ever. To play us out, I'm gonna play the patch I made on the Nord Stage 3 over a backing track Danish Pete did for another video on the guitar channel where they tried to match the guitar sound. Check that out as well. Check out Danish Pete. All his backing tracks are great to play along to. Uh, I might open up a bit of the cutoff fill. And remember, if you want the patch, just message me on Instagram and I'll try to send it to you. All right, thanks guys. Hit it, DJ.